I've been a Raspberry Pi fan for nearly 10 years. Uh, here's a small sampling, but it's time for me to move from this to this. Stay tuned. I've been eyeing the 8 gig version of the Raspberry Pi 5 since its release in October 2023. Uh, I was really looking forward to getting rid of those um, quirky, unreliable micro SD cards and uh, using the Pi's PCIe connection and a proper NVMe SSD drive. Uh, that said, by the time I added the NVMe hat, the 500 gig SSD drive, new case, and active fan, etc., uh, I had a bit of sticker shock. Uh, th this got me looking into alternatives and I stumbled across this B-Link S12 Pro Mini PC. Uh, this Mini PC was priced similarly to the uh, Pi 5 I'd spec'd out and it comes with double the memory at uh, 16 gigs, includes the 500 gig NVMe M.2 drive, has a 12th gen x86 processor versus the Pi's ARM, and a Windows 11 OS license. I paid uh, $159 for this particular unit. Uh, I'll put a link to this mini PC in the description below. All right, let's open her up. And first we have the manual. And underneath the manual, we have the mini PC itself. It's uh, super lightweight. Next, let's check out what's in the accessory box. In the accessory box, uh, looks like we got uh, two HDMI cables, uh, two different lengths. Got the uh, power adapter, screws, and a uh, VESA mount in case we want to attach the uh, mini PC to the back of a monitor. The unit's case is plastic and the top is nice, clean, and simple. Uh, let's see, the measurements are four and a half by four by one and a half. And uh, here it is next to a Raspberry Pi 4. On this side, we have two USB 3.0 ports, a one gig LAN port, two HDMI 2.0 ports, uh, let's see the uh, 12 volt 3 amp power port, a locking port, and some exhaust vents. On the other side we have a clear CMOS switch, two more USB 3 ports, a 3.5 millimeter headphone plug, and the power button. On both of the sides there's uh, additional vents. And finally, the bottom has four rubber feet and uh, provisions for the VESA mount. All right, let's open it up. And to remove the back cover, you remove the four screws on each one of the corners, and you're supposed to pull up using this little tab right here. Uh, mine was kind of a uh, tight fit, so what I did was I inserted the uh, VESA mount screws, and I used these to pull up on the panel. And be careful, there is a ribbon cable. And the top cover can accommodate an additional two and a half inch SSD drive. Uh, looks like there is a uh, 16 gig DDR4 sodium module. Uh, unfortunately, unlike the picture on Amazon, looks like this is a AZW branded memory uh, versus the uh, Crucial. And we have a uh, 500 gig uh, M.2 NVMe drive. Uh, in addition, uh, this mini PC comes with a proper quad-core Intel N100 processor. Uh, in addition, it has uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi 6 capabilities. You know, not quite sure what's going on here, but uh, let's test it out. Okay, so I have the power, the HDMI, the Ethernet, and the keyboard and mouse plugged in. Let's power it on.
All right, and this version looks to come with a copy of Windows 11. Uh, let me go through the setup process and get back with you. After the setup, I did uh, plug in a set of speakers. This mini PC comes with a copy of Windows 11 Professional. Uh, you can see the active state right here. And when we go to the uh, specifications, uh, the uh, PC has an N100 processor uh, running at 800 megahertz, but uh, don't let that fool you. Uh, that's a uh, power saving feature. It can boost up to 3.4 uh, gigahertz when needed. Uh, the beauty of this particular CPU is the uh, TDP is only 6 watts. And moving on down, we do have 16 gigs of memory. And just an observation, this PC is really silent. Barely knows it. Okay, let's continue on with some testing. Prior to starting, I did run malware bytes to confirm that there were no items detected. Uh, I also ran all the uh, Windows updates. Okay, I am going to start with a uh, CPU benchmark using Geekbench 6. And um, this is going to take a while, so what I'll do is I'll uh, cut to the good parts. Okay, that's going to be pretty easy to remember. The uh, single core score is 1, 2, 3, 4, and the multi core score is 3, 1, 5, 4. Let's see what this compares to. All right, and it looks like the uh, single core score is comparable to an AMD Ryzen 5 2600X. Uh, let's see if we could get some additional details on this processor out of curiosity. The general information over here. Our release date was uh, 2018. And although this uh, mini PC doesn't have a separate GPU, I'm kind of curious to see how the uh, 3D Mark Time Spy uh, benchmark will run on this system. This is probably gonna take a while to load and run, so I'll show the highlights. Uh, no surprises here. The uh, audio is perfectly fine, but the uh, video is painfully slow. And this is showing 2.2 uh, frames per second. Yeah, if this was a video game, it'd be unplayable. So for this particular combination, uh, the score of 373 is great. However, if we compare it to others online, <laughs> this score is better than 0% of all results. Uh, once again, not surprising. This is Cinebench 2024, and I'm gonna run the uh, CPU multi-core benchmark. And this is definitely going to take a considerable amount of time, so I'll check in periodically. I am clearly asking this little guy to do things it wasn't designed for, but uh, I'm just curious. And after a considerable amount of time, the uh, mini PC produced a score of 195, and here's a comparison with other uh, CPUs. So. Uh, let's see, we got the uh, 12th gen Intel Core i7 uh, at 433 points, and this mini PC with the uh, N100, the score was 196. And now let's run some benchmarks against the uh, 512 gig internal disk using Crystal Disk Mark. And here are the results of the reads and writes uh, using the M.2 drive. Um, gotta admit that I'm a little disappointed at the speeds, but uh, this may be because it's uh, running PCIe 1X. Uh, that said, it's considerably faster than the Raspberry Pi's uh, micro SD read writes. And here's some power consumption information in regards to the uh, mini PC. So at idle, we're looking at uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 amps, and looks like about 
Hi8 9 watts and 15 16 volt amps. And here's the utilization for the Raspberry Pi 4. Oh, as expected, it's lower. It's uh, 0.06 amps, about 4 watts, and 7 volt amps. And here are the numbers from the system that I'm hoping to consolidate. Uh, 0.28 amps, 32 watts, and 34.2 volt amps. And some final thoughts. Uh, do you tinker, build hardware projects, need a GPIO, uh, really short on power and space? You know, then the Raspberry Pi still has its place. Uh, there's tons of Raspberry Pi specific accessories and a large community. Um, examples are running OctoPrint for your 3D printer, Home Assistant, and as I mentioned before, uh, PiHole. That said, after working with this mini PC for a few weeks, it's perfectly fine as a desktop PC. Um, internet, YouTube, the standard stuff is not a problem. Uh, this is clearly not a gaming PC or for heavy video rendering or editing. But uh, this has met and exceeded my expectations when comparing it to a Raspberry Pi. Um, it's much more powerful, flexible, and more compatible with a lot of software and uh, hardware than the Pi. I'll have a part two for this mini PC where I'll set it up as my lab server with uh, Proxmox and install PyHole as well as other VMs and containers. Uh, this is to decommission my old lab server, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I'll have links for this mini PC as well as the kilowatt in the description below. If you like this video, please click like and consider becoming a subscriber. Thank you.